our little entertainment, and I'm sure we've all enjoyed it immensely. I'm sorry to say, or perhaps I really shouldn't say sorry, but we won't have the pleasure of hearing Betsy sing for us again here. Betsy's leaving us today. Mr. Shea, who is a dear friend of her parents, has come to take her to live with him in New York. I'm sure she has everybody's good wishes for happiness in her new home. <laughs> Dear, I've still got to wrap all those toys Mr. Shea's been bringing you. Couldn't I leave them here, Miss Hutchins? Oh, Mr. Shea might not like it. You won't care. Please, Miss Hutchins, I'd much rather leave them here. Just give them to... Oh, everybody. Oh, that's sweet of you, dear. Say thanks to Betsy, girl. Thank you, Betsy. Now say goodbye to everybody and we'll hurry along. Goodbye, Carol. Bye, Betsy. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, Betsy. Goodbye, Sheila. Goodbye, Betsy. Goodbye, Marilyn. Goodbye, Betsy. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Betsy. Goodbye, Rosalie. Well, what's the matter? Don't you want to say goodbye to me? No. Why, Rosalie, I'm surprised. Now, come be a nice girl and say goodbye to Betsy. No, I don't want to say goodbye. Why not? Because, because I don't want Betsy to go.
Hotel Variety. The three dancing baby dolls. They don't live here anymore. I don't know. I reckon they retired on their social security. You're welcome. Hello, Sam. Rossi, see if you can locate Betsy. It's time she was in bed. Hello, is Betsy up there? Any mail for me, Pop? You see a telephone? Oh, no mail for you, Sam. Any mail for his fiddle? Yeah, from its bowl. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of gags that kill Vaudeville. Hello, Betsy. Hello, Betsy. Hello, Hello. Betsy. Hello, Betsy. Hello. Upstage, rehearsing the theater. Hello, Angel. Hello. Where have you been? Oh, just visiting. Visiting? When you should have been in bed? Have you done your homework? Oh, yes. Here's my arithmetic. Who helped you with these problems? Mr. Berdini, the magician. Hmm. Six goes into 18 five times. <laughs> Seven goes into 21 four times. He's a magician, all right. Oh, he's awful clever. He's been teaching me new tricks. May I have my key, please? Is that some of your ventriloquism? That wasn't me. Is there any mail for us? Oh, hello. It's Mr. and Mrs. Bresno. There you are. Thank you. It's from our son. He's in college. Look, Mom. Butch made the football team. Uh, Look. Here's Mom and Pop. Just a line or two. Hope you and Mom are well and have found something to do. I am getting along fine with my, my studies. Goodness. And as you can see, I'm on the squad. Hello, George. Hello, Wally. Hi, folks. Hello, Betts. Hello, Hello Mike. Mike. Is there anything for us, Mike? Buffalo, next week. One night for a smoker in a hurry. How about you? Sorry, Mr. Brody. I'm all booked up tonight. On the slumber time, huh? <laughs> I get it. What do you suggest, Pop? Why, let me see. Better if he owes the most rent. Right. Yes. Well, there's Martin and Martin, nine weeks. Sullivan and Haley, six weeks. Jimmy Clayton and his jazz bandits, 12 weeks. How about them? They're a knockout. All right, if you say so. Get Jimmy Clayton on the telephone. I raise a thousand bucks. I think the phone's ringing. Don't change the subject. I call you. What you got? What do you got? Oh, I, I, I just got a little pair of trays. And I thought you was bluffing. <laughs> <laughs> Nuts to me. You get it? <laughs> Did you hang up your dress? I hung up my dress, put away my shoes, brushed my teeth, washed my neck, face, hands, and ears. Nice work. I used to have curls all over my head once. Oh, that must have been lovely. Yes, but they were lots of trouble. <laughs> now, don't you sit up and listen to that music. You just shut your eyes and go right to sleep. I'll shut my eyes, but it'll probably come in through my ears. <laughs> Close that window and hand me the telephone book. Yes, sister? Seem to be enjoying that horrible racket. Hmm? <clears throat> well, I was carried away for the moment. Hmm. Yes, Miss Welling, this is Mr. Shea's daughter. My father's... I'm a 
awfully sorry the boys are rehearsing, but I'd be glad to. I'm tired of warning you people. I won't have my nights disturbed by a lot of noisy riffraff. I won't put up with it any longer. I'm sorry, Miss Wending. I'll go right up and... <coughs> she called us a lot of riffraff. Who? Our landlady. I didn't know we had one. Well, if you ever see a pumpkin in one of the windows next door, and it isn't Halloween, that's our landlady. Oh. Oh. I can't look out my window without seeing a lot of acrobats, jugglers, midgets, and actors. How much rent does the Hotel Variety owe? $2,500, past due since the 12th. Write a letter. To what's his name? Shay. Sarah. Te Tell him unless his rent is paid within five days, in full, out he goes. Come on, in you go. Oh, boy, 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 boy. Say, I better go up there and see about stopping that music. Oh, no, I like it. You do? Yeah, especially that song. Well, it is a pretty song. Know why I like it? No, why? Because the words are just the way I feel about you and Pop. No fooling. Lots of times I wanted to thank you. Oh, ever so much. You don't have to, darling. I'm afraid I can't, because... How can I thank you? How do I start? The words are somewhere around my heart. If I could say it in a word or two, how much it means to be loved by you. Got to stick together. It's one for all, and divided we fall. The wolf is at the door, and the handwriting is on the wall. Pop's always been regular with us. He sure has. So what does it get him? A shady nook behind the eight ball. We gotta go out and hock everything we own. Jewelry, trunks, instruments, props, everything. We've got our sorority pins left. Get all the dough you can and give it a pop. If it wasn't for Pop, we'd all have barnacles on our hips from sleeping on park benches. And that's what'll happen if that old Batlax next door puts him out of the hotel. It's up to us to raise some dough. Yimmy, here's my watch. What about that stick pin? Oh, oh this weight should choke me. My goodness, don't pull it so hard. I'll give it to you. Yes? May I see Miss Sarah Wendling, please? She's not at home. When will she be back? I don't know. So? I'm waiting for her, too. You are? Oh, yes. I'm important business. Well, uh, maybe if it's very important, I might put in a good word for you. Do you know Miss Wendling? 
Oh, yes, very well. She's my aunt. She is? Well, say, would you please give her this and tell her it's on account for the rent of the hotel? The hotel? What hotel? Next door. And will you please ask her to wait until Pop can pay her the rest? Well, uh, uh, whom shall I say this is from? Betsy. No, from Pop. Mr. Shea. Oh. Uh, maybe it'd be a better idea if you came inside and told her yourself. But she's not in. He said so. Oh, he did. I have an idea. He's been imagining things. Miss Wendling is in it, isn't she, Simmons? She's in the library, sir. Pudding Club. Hmm. Well, but it tastes good. You know, we dancers have got to stick together. Absolutely. We should be together, like the walls and ceiling. Like a door and doorknob. Like the hat on your knob. Like butler goes with doorbell. Keyhole with key. I think we'll get by if you'll stick with me. We should be together, like the frame and picture, like shoes and stockings, like the clocks tick tocking, like cap and toe, like high and low. Stop and go, honey, you're a perfect lady. You're a regular guy. Oh, thanks. We, we should, should be together, together you and I. I. Miss Wendling, and this is Uncle Willoughby. How do you do, Miss Wendling? How do you do, Mr. Uncle Willoughby? Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> what silly nonsense are you up to now? Oh, this isn't nonsense. This is high finance. Hear the pretty music? This young lady wants to give you money to pay the rent of the hotel. 
Nonsense. Come on, Betsy. So you've gone in for social service? Oh, not exactly, Aunt Sarah. I just met an acquaintance here. There's almost $5 in there. And I'm sure Papa will have the rest of it for you very soon, Miss Welling. Bless my soul. Keep your soul out of this. You'll please get rid of this child. But Aunt Sarah... If those people next door think they can play on my sympathy like this, they're greatly mistaken. I'll have my rent, all of it, or out they go. Please, Miss Wenling, please don't put Papa out of the hotel. He and Barbara and Jimmy and everybody, they'll have no place to live. That's their affair, not mine. But Aunt Sarah, aren't you being a little bit hard? Yes, Sarah, I think. Think to yourself. The place is an infernal nuisance, full of worthless, disreputable actors. They are not disputable. They're very good actors. Thank you. Roger. Oh, just charge it to my share of the estate. <laughs> Simmons, you will get rid of this child. You don't need to get rid of me. I can go. Oh, just a moment, Betsy. Uh, Aunt Sarah, I don't wish to seem impertinent, but after all, I do have a third interest in the hotel. As long as I have charge of the Wendling estate, I'll handle it in my own way. Simmons? See this child at the door. Stand aside. Uh, that'll be all, Simmons. I'll see the young lady home. Come on, Betsy. Wait. Just a minute. Here, take these. Thanks, Uh, Willoughby. Simmons, get my hat and coat, please. Very good, sir. Uh, say, Willoughby, I may want to see you about this a little later. No, no, no. I, I don't want to be involved, but... Uh, I'll be at the club. Come, come, young lady. Cheer up, darling. Cheer up. I guess I'm not a very good businesswoman. Oh, that's great. Then you won't grow up to be like my Aunt Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> come on, honey. Thank you, Simmons. See you later, Uncle Willoughby. Bye, Mr. Uncle Willoughby. Bye-bye, Betsy. And if you say one word to my sister about those cookies, I'll smack you right in the kisser. Very good, sir. You know you shouldn't have gone over there without permission. I was only trying to help Pop. <laughs> I'm glad she did. I'd never have known that this place existed. It's, uh, it's all very interesting. Next door, we hardly realize we're so close to anything so, uh, so different. I suppose you feel like a feudal lord visiting the tenants on his estate. I bet you'd look grand all dressed up like a knight on a big white horse. <laughs> Riding back to his castle for safety? No, rescuing the fairy princess. I mean, two fairy princesses. Mr. Wendling, I couldn't possibly raise the money in five days. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I was going to make a suggestion before your daughter so graciously knighted me. I was going to suggest that possibly I could lend you the 2500 My aunt needn't know. You'd lend me? Why, thanks a million. Thanks two million. One for me. I'm afraid we can't accept your generous offer. But why not, Barbara? Because I don't know how we could pay it back. And because we're not going to be at the mercy of any spiteful old money bag who calls us a lot of riffraff. I'm sorry, Mr. Shea. I, uh... So am I. You see, I just couldn't accept your kind offer now. I understand. Come, Betsy, it's time for your lunch. Pop, couldn't Mr. Wendling stay and have lunch with me? Well, I'm afraid. As a matter of fact, I was just going to invite you to have lunch with me, but I guess the Wendlings are sort of social outcasts around here now. Please let me go with them. I wish you would. Please, Pop. I'm old enough to go out with a nice young man. All right. It's a date. Barbara's awful smart. She reads great big books when she's not helping Pop at the hotel. Oh, she does? Yes. She told me she's studying how not to be an actress. Oh, I see. Well, uh, does she have many boyfriends? Oh, yes, lots of them. There's Ole, the poor Martins, Jimmy and his jazz bandits. No, no, I mean, uh, is there anybody that takes her out to dinner, lunch? You know, a uh, sweetheart? Oh, no. I guess she's just an old maid. Like I was till you came along. Say, are you by any chance trying to tell me that you like me? Mm-hmm. I can't show how much I love you in this little face I've got. 
I don't know how much I love you, but it's an enormous lot. If all the world were paper and all the seas were ink, I'd write a great big note to you and tell you what I think. I'd say I love you dearly in letters three miles high and sign it yours sincerely across my heart and hope to die. If all the stars were diamonds in golden skies above, they wouldn't be worth that without your love. I'd like to write I love you so big that you would play. If all the world was paper, yes, and all the seas were in. Mummies sitting in there for? Mummies? <laughs> Those aren't mummies, Betsy. Those are millionaires. They spent all their lives trying to make a million dollars, and now they sit there wondering why. Hello, old timer. Is uh, Mr. Wendling in? He's in the grill, sir. Oh, he's in the grill. Someone was a little bit sour. Yeah. It was you. Why? Well, what do you know about music? <laughs> well, of all the importance. <laughs> you were off key. That part goes like this. I loved you as I loved you when you were sweet. That's just the way I did. Oh, no, 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 you no, never no, did no, I did. Let's, no, let's, no, 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 let's try it again. All right, you take it. You as I loved you when you were sweet, when you were sweet. That's the best you've ever done. Now we got it. Let's hold it. <laughs> the youngster knows his stuff. Yes, 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 yes. Begging your pardon, gentlemen. So sorry, but uh, this noise. Oh, what are you talking about? We've been having complaints. The other club members... Just when we're getting hot. What's this country coming to if a man can't sing in his own club? Isn't there some place we can rehearse without being disturbed? I know a place. Yeah, where? A hotel. See, that's a swell idea. No, it won't no. work. We've been thrown out of the finest hotels in New York. The Waldorf Astoria and St. Regis. Yeah, that's oh, <laughs> well, you'll never be thrown out of this one. Huh? This one is just made to order for you. Just say you're a quartet, and you can sing all you want to. Really? Where is this place? You mean... She's right. Come on, boys. I hate a little out. <laughs> Last one out to the old man. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I'm not going to be old man. Hurry up. <laughs> Eight bucks from the Tri-State Trio, five from Doggerty, and five from Conklin Scully. How much are we short? About 2,100. National debt. I thought I was bringing home the bacon. And you laid an egg. That's right. Bite the hand that feeds the kitty. Thanks, just the same. 
You're a great guy, Jimmy. That goes for me, too, Bubble Brain. Is that straight from the balcony, Juliet? It's my streamlined personality. I guess I'm not as bad as I look, huh? You couldn't be. That's done it. From now on, when you talk to me, start the conversation with goodbye. This way, gentlemen. Oh, Pop. Hurry, Pop. We brought you some new gifts. These gentlemen were looking for a hotel, so I suggested, or rather Betsy did, that they come over here. Uh, professionals? Oh, yes, they're a quartet. Yes, this is the well-known uh, Hot and Happy Four. She is, the Hot and, the hot and Happy Four. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you boys been playing? Oh, uh, hotels, clubs, churches, and places. Now, would you prefer single rooms or a suite? Oh, they want the best in the house, don't you? Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 we do. Best. There's a nice big suite on the fourth floor with four beds and a green carpet. Green? My favorite color. We'll take that. Well, that's pretty high. Forty dollars a week. Oh, I'm sure that's not too steep for these gentlemen. It's no, not, not at very all. reasonable. Well, that's fine. Uh, uh, where is your baggage? Huh? A baggage? Oh, baggage. Oh, wait. <coughs> well, uh, we could get some if, you, if it's necessary. Oh, it's very necessary. Because guests without baggage have to pay in advance. Isn't that right, Pop? It's a rule of the house. Oh, that's quite all right. How much will you want in advance? Well, uh, suppose we let Betsy decide that. Well, let's see. I think about, well, ten years. <laughs> <laughs> no, suppose we make it one year. Oh, no, 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 that's too much. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sure these gentlemen would rather pay one year in advance, wouldn't you, Jim? Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, you see, then they wouldn't have to worry about the rent, and neither would you. There you are, sir. Fifty-two times forty is two thousand and eight. Gee, you're awful good in arithmetic. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Four twenty-six. I'll take them up. Follow me, gentlemen. Me, 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 me. Uh, <clears throat> well, say, how are the acoustics here? Oh, we don't have any. We use split. <laughs> I hope it don't bounce. I don't think it will. <laughs> Pop, there's 25 bucks more. I got it, Jimmy. I got the 2,500. What? And we just made the supreme sacrifice. Look. Why, what happened? We done a strip tease in a pawn shop. Georgie. Georgie, where are you? You watch. Marco, yeah. you dummy. Take your drums away, Jerry. Take them away. You shallow hiney. <laughs> Here's your piccolo pack. Here you are, Sid. Take it away. The twins. Your paternity oh, pins. Thanks, Jimmy. Ollie. You wake her up, eh? Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Oh, no, 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 please, please don't do that. Jimmy, how you get them out the hack? Ask me no questions. Mr. Wendling. Oh, hello. You still mad? Oh, how could I be after all you've done for us? May I say thank you? Well, sure, if you'll omit the mister and make it plain Roger. Uh, thank you, Roger. That's okay. Barbara, Betsy wants you upstairs to help her with a reading lesson. Tell her I'll be right up. <laughs> Take it. I go along too. I used to be very good at reading. Well, Betsy's in the third grade. Third grade? <laughs> that high? Well, maybe I could learn something. Well, come on along. Run for your life, says a little princess. I am the cap. Cap. Now, slowly. What's this? Tip. Captain. Oh, yeah. I am the captain of a wicked old sor 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 Sorceress. Oh, you mustn't tell her. Let her figure the words out herself. I am not afraid, said the brave young prince. I have come to rescue you and take you to my castle. I like him. But you are in great peril. Peril. That means danger. Then why doesn't it say danger? All right, skip it. Suddenly, there was a great roar behind him. It was the wicked old sorceress. Riding on her broom, on her shoulder was a dodo bird, and the dodo bird was whispering in her ear, This is Winchell's dad. 
daily chatter. That expensive speed buggy parked daily in front of Pop Shea's Hotel Variety belongs to the Roger Wendling. And the reason is Pop's lovely daughter, Barbara. I thought it my duty to inform you, Miss Wendling. Well, that's why he hasn't been dining at home. Cancel my reservations. I'll take a later train to Newport. I'll put a stop to all this right now. <laughs> look, I want to show you here. <laughs> you left myself sixty. Now look, up here, here's the little boy, and the little boy comes down here, and he's got a dog, but the dog won't come downstairs. <laughs> so the little boy goes upstairs, and he chucks the dog downstairs. <laughs> Ain't that good? <laughs> oh, so you don't like that? Look in here, I show you. Come, come. Isn't there anyone looking after this place? No. You all can't call South Brooklyn. It's ten cents in advance. Come, come. With or without bath? I don't want a bath. I mean a room. I want to talk to that man Shay's daughter. She's upstairs right now. Is there anything I can do? There is. Have her come downstairs at once. Well, park yourself right over there and I'll see if I can get her. No, and I'm not your grandmother. It's okay by me, Toots. What a face! What a face! What are you talking Just about? Just what I need. Gordon's new play would be great for the old witch. Oh, I would. Well, don't blow that smoke in my face. Stop! <coughs> One Oscar giggling up. Sarah. It's the old pumpkin. So this is where you've been wasting your time. Aunt Sarah, please, please. Uh, Barbara, Betsy. I'd like you to meet my aunt. This is uh, Miss Shea and Miss Betsy Shea. How Miss do you do? Young lady, I've just come here to tell you that I want you to let this nephew of mine alone. You let him pay your rent for you, didn't aunt you? Aunt Sarah. I don't have to listen to this. Aunt Sarah, that was uncalled for, unkind, and untrue. Uncle Roger didn't give us any money. We got it from, <coughs> from someone else. Oh, so it's Uncle Roger now. Is this, this woman your mother? Practically. Betsy is Mr. Shea's adopted child. Adopted her. So they brought her to this wholesome atmosphere. Nice place for a child. Why, she's using her as a decoy, and you haven't sense enough to realize it. Aunt Sarah, you don't know what you're saying. Roger, I want you to get out of here and stay out. Well, you forget that I'm over 21. You forget that I control your finances. And I'm not going to allow any Broadway gold digger to get your money if I can help it. Stand aside. Did she mean me? <laughs> no, I don't think so, Betsy. I don't know what she's talking about, but I'll bet she's going to make trouble for us. Yes, I'm ringing them, mister. Flossie. Just a minute. Flossie, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? A man gets lonesome knocking around with no one to talk to but a five-piece orchestra and living in a... Hotel Variety. That's right. And I was wondering if I asked a certain girl to marry me, what would she say? You're on a busy line, stupid. Go ahead. I would draw the question. I want to see Mr. Shea. Is he around? Somebody calling me? The law. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? What's this? What's the matter, Pop? It's for Betsy. 
Now, if you could come around tomorrow morning... Sorry, old man. I don't like this any more than you do. But I gotta take her back tonight. Look here, officer. You can't take Betsy back to the orphan asylum. You know why? Because Betsy ain't here. She's down south with dear old Dixie. Sure. Visiting with my folks. I wish I was in Dixie. Away, away. Hey, are you crazy? Yeah. No. You see, we don't want to lose Betsy. That's why I lied to you. She's up in her room. What's the number? 220. I'll go and get her. She's gone to Newport, won't be back for a month. I guess they never think of looking for her there. No, come on, Betsy. Oops, a Daisy. Hang on tight now. Hold her, Barbara, when I get over. I got her. There you are. Thanks, an awful lot. Will you and Pop and everybody come over to see me? You bet we will. Good night, darling. Good night. They can't do this to us. We'll take it up to the Supreme Court, to Washington, to Lincoln. Officer, take your prisoner. I'm sorry, old boy. I know. Just doing your duty. Now run along before I give vent to my emotions. Say, where are you going with my wife? What do you mean, your wife? you down on my side. Oh, but sugar pie, I only did it to help Betsy. Uh. What's the matter, darling? Something wrong? No, nothing, Uncle Weldy. Only... Only what? Couldn't I go over to the hotel for just a few minutes? Oh, no, dear. No, there's been a detective over there every day this week. Now, you just be patient a little longer. But I was sure someone would come over. Especially today. Why? What's today? Come on, tell me. It's my birthday. Your birthday? My, my. At the orphanage, they always had a birthday cake for me. Well, Pop and Barbara have been very busy, but we'll make up for it. Come on, let's go downstairs, huh? You won't miss just one birthday party. You'll have so many more birthdays and so many more parties. How about some cookies? But it just doesn't seem like a birthday at all. Well, when the detectives stop hanging around in another week or so, maybe we can sneak over to the hotel and have a fine big party. What do you say? Oh, dear. I haven't even wished you a happy birthday myself. Happy birthday.
to be loved by you. Then I could thank you for all you've done. But I don't know what to do. What can you say when a dream comes true? How can I ever Betsy, darling, this is no time for tears. This is your birthday. On behalf of the Hoi Polloi gathered here, I just want to say many happy returns. And when do we eat? Now. It's the big parade. What a joint. What a joint. Thank you. That, that's very nice of you. Oh. One call! Cut the cake, Betsy! Cut the cake! Oh, my goodness! Get out. Get out, all of you. Call this hospitality? I'll take it up with Emily Post. Where are you taking that child? Where do you suppose I'm taking her home? Officer? He here, Phil. Keep out of this, you Judas. There's the child you're after. You let her alone. Come, Betsy. Just a minute. Don't you hurt Pa. Don't you dare hurt Pa. We're not going to hurt anyone, little girl. No need to get excited. We've got orders to pick her up. No, no. I want to stay with Pa. Well, I don't blame you. But you just come along now and your pop can straighten things out later. I'm afraid you'll have to go with him, Betsy. But I don't want to go to the orphanage. I want to stay with you. Now, don't cry, darling. I'll come and see you, and I'll, I'll get you out again. I wish you were a man for about five minutes. Now, Sarah, you listen to me. I suppose if Simmons hadn't warned me in time, you probably would have had all these freaks living here. Well, it was the child's birthday and people just happened to drop in. A likely story. Where's Roger? Out with that scheming shea girl, I suppose. No, on the contrary. He... Happy birthday! Well, uh, what kind of a birthday party is this? You're a little late for your party, aren't you? Where is everyone? Where's Betsy? On her way to the orphan asylum. I should be among decent people and not a lot of... Come on, Barbara. Wait! Young lady, you can give your father a message for me. He's being dispossessed. Oh, you can. I'm tearing the hotel down. But he's paid his rent. He's violated his lease by having all sorts of animals on the premises. He'll save himself a lot of trouble by getting right out. Huh. I'll have something to say about that. I'm afraid not, as our attorney will inform you. And furthermore, Roger, I warn you, if you continue your association with this woman... Continue it? Say, I've been just trying to get her to make it permanent. Come on, Barbara. Roger, wait. Roger! It really is 
doesn't look very nice out there. There's practically no one to play with, just grown-ups. And you know how tiresome they can be. Yeah. Didn't you have any fun at all? Well, it was fun seeing it with Uncle Willoughby's quartet. And Jimmy was awfully good to me. And Bob and... Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. It's not so bad here. No. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's no use crying about it. Remember what you used to tell us? To be optimistic. Don't be a grumpy. And when the road gets bumpy, just smile. Your troubles can't be as bad as all that. And when you're sad as all that, nobody loves you. Be optimistic, don't you be a grumpy. When the road gets bumpy, just smile. Smile and be happy, your troubles can't be as bad as all that. When you're sad as all that, no one loves you. Be optimistic, don't you be a mourner. Rise up that corner and smile. smile. Don't wear a long face. Never inside. Be optimistic and smile. It's my property and my money just as much as it's hers. And trustee or no trustee, she's got to give it to me. What did you ask her? I asked her for the hotel and fifty thousand dollars, just enough to rent a theater and back a show to give those poor devils a chance to earn a living for themselves. You'll never get it, you know, Sarah. But I've got to get it. Mr. Fisk, you're a lawyer. There must be some way. Come on, tell me. What can I do? Now, don't get me in this. I don't want to get tangled up with Sarah Wendling. Me? Oh, but I'm just asking for legal advice. Well, now, I'd, I'd rather not have anything to do with it. You can't fight Sarah Wendling. Very well, gentlemen. Very well. Then we'll just allow these people to starve. People that you all know and admire. And don't forget, down deep in your hearts, you're just a bunch of ham actors yourself. Oh, wait, oh wait, gentlemen, wait I'm surprised to think that you'd sit here and make beggars and panhandlers out of the same artist that you used to applaud. To think that you'll allow my Aunt Sarah, just to satisfy some simple whim of hers, to tear the roof right from over their heads, to turn them out in the streets to You start. can stop her. How? By getting out a temporary injunction restraining her. You're a part owner. Well, mind you, I, I'm not advising no, you. No, no, no advice, but what do I do then? Now, let me alone, Roger. There's no harm in telling come you. Come on, come on, Mr. Fisk. Well, you, you could bring a court action compelling Sarah to turn over your portion of the estate, including the hotel. Uh, but understand now, it's, it's just a chance. Uh, and I don't want to have anything to do with it. No, no. Because you're afraid of that big bullying sister of mine. Well, I'm not. Roger, I'm with you. Good for you, Uncle Willoughby. And you're going to take the case. No! Yes! No! Yes! Now, you hurry up and get out that injunction, or I'll throw you out of the quartet, you... you... off-key baritone. Here's the mail newspaper, Miss Hutchins. Oh, thank you, darling. Will you read me the funnies? Not now, after dinner, when you and the other children. Please, Miss Hutchins, please read me the funnies. Oh, it's all right. Come on. <sighs> oh, look. It's Roger, and that's Miss Wendling. What does it say, Miss Hutchins? Please read it to us. Trial of Roger Wendling's action against his Aunt Sarah for the petition of the Wendling estate was begun today before Judge Hart in Surrogate Court. The young millionaire's action against his eccentric aunt was occasioned by her threat to tear down the hotel variety. This was temporarily prevented by an injunction. She wants to tear down the hotel? So it seems. What'll happen to Pop and Barbara? Oh, now, 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 don't you worry. Everything's going to be all right. That old pumpkin. I'd like to... Uh, 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 uh. Come on, get some more. Come on, bring it. Aren't you afraid, Betsy? You might fall and hurt yourself. Oh, please don't do it, Betsy. I've got to get to Pop. He's in trouble, and I've got to be with him. <coughs> you have to tight enough? Uh-huh. All right. Goodbye. Bye. 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 But what do we tell the matron? Uh, tell her I've gone out west to fight Indians. Yeah, 
careful, Betsy. What's your name? Betsy, what's yours? Harry. Where are you going? Home. Where's home? New York, on 49th Street. That's a million miles from here. I ain't going that far. Take me as far as you go? Mm. All right. How come you got way out here? You see, last night I was riding home with my dad in his car. He was driving awfully fast. And all of a sudden, he hit a bump in the road, and I bounced right out of the car. And he didn't know it? No. What a dope. You gotta get off at the next corner. If I could get to a subway, it would almost get me home. If... if I had a nickel. Thanks a lot for the ride. I appreciate it very much. Goodbye. So long. Come on, get off. Well, here's a nickel. Oh, thanks. Come on, will you scram? Get off. How far is it to the subway station? Six blocks. And I ain't going that way. Please take me to the subway station. Oh, all right. You dames are all alike. You are with us, Mr. Parry. Mr. Wendley, isn't it true that you intend to use this money to put on a vaudeville show? A small portion of it, yes, sir. And you intend to put this show on with actors living at the Hotel Variety? That's right. But isn't it quite probable that this vaudeville venture of yours may prove a failure? Or, in the Broadway vernacular, a flop? What? With me and my band? I object. <laughs> order, order in the court. To my eyes, believe me, that's Betsy. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. Well, where is everybody? Well, they're over in the courthouse with the judge. Why aren't you there? That you see, the crowds make us so nervous. I've got to get to the trial, Ollie. You've got to take me. Please, I want to be with Pop. You must take me there, Ollie. Well, all right. Come on, ask us. Crowd, no crowd. We got to go. Miss Wendling, do you know William J. Shea? I do. Have you ever seen your nephew in the company of Barbara Shea? I object! Well, I noticed this place because they told us they were seeing his dead pop and dead Barbara. <laughs> order! Order in the court! Well, I rode on bicycles. Order! Order in the... Uh, the... <laughs> Go on to the case, please. Has your nephew ever asked you for any substantial sums of money for any business ventures of any kind? Only once, about two weeks ago. Did you give it to him? I did not. Why? Because he wanted to throw it away on a lot of idle, worthless, good-for-nothing actors. They are not good-for-nothing. They're the nicest people in the whole world. You said it, Betts. Your Honor, I object to the lady's incinerations. It's irrelevant, immemorial, and a bare-faced lie. <laughs> if there's any more of this, I'll clear the courtroom. Your Honor, that child belongs in an orphanage. I put her there myself. Those scoundrels have kidnapped her. Oh, I came here all by myself. That's another fib you told, Miss Wendling. Uh, bring that youngster up here. Young lady, do you realize you are guilty of contempt of court? I'm awfully sorry. But it just made me mad to hear Miss Wendling say those mean things about my friends. Because they aren't true. Honest, Mr. Judge, they're wonderful actors. Just wonderful. <laughs> This young lady doesn't seem to agree with you, Miss Wendling. 
But she never saw the Mac, did you, Miss Wemmy? And if you saw the Mac, Mr. Judge, if you saw Jimmy and his band and everybody, oh, I know you'd think they were wonderful, too. Did he please recall? Yeah, I'd like to... Just a minute. I believe this court can be saved a lot of time and argument by following the splendid suggestion that has just been made. It appears the immediate issue in this case is whether or not the plaintiff's proposal to invest his money in a theatrical production is a sound one. Your Honor, it doesn't mean that... You... I mean that I want to see the show right here in this courtroom tomorrow. <laughs> court adjourned. <laughs> 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 you was well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, start your show. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, present your evidence, please. Before you. With the show, you're invited now to see with me. It's a wow, and I hope that you'll agree with me. Their business, show business, just comes to no business without backing. That's all they're lacking. All they need is a chance. A chance to smile, to laugh, to sing, to dance. And that is that, and that is all. Thank you for the you of the hall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, order, order. Uh, you may proceed. Uh, uh, is your evidence ready? My first evidence, Your Honor, Exhibit A. Oh, you'll take the high road and I'll take the low road and I'll be in Scotland the Gentlemen, won't you sing a song for me? I'm afraid you wouldn't like the old-time numbers that we sing. Why? People don't like them nowadays. All they want to do is swing. Well, why don't you take an old song and swing it? How would that be? But how do we do it? There's nothing to it. Just follow me. First of all, you start to sway. Way, and now that you've got yourself swinging, do the same thing with your singing. Swing me an old-fashioned song. Down by the old mill stream. Da 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 da. Swing me an old-fashioned song. Old-fashioned song. Croon me an old-fashioned tune. Da 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 da. In the evening by the moonlight. You can hear those darkies singing. Oh, croon me an old-fashioned tune. Don't you croon that tune? Just keep it soft and sweet with rhythm from the start. But keep that old-time beat. The beat that's straight from the heart. Swing me an old-fashioned song. I wander to day to the hill. Maggie. That's it. It's just an old-fashioned song. <laughs> Dear old girl, the robins sing above you. Oh, Won't you try it? Oh, 
George Gordon. I offer this show a 10-week engagement in my international follies at $2,500 a week. Your Honor, I object. This show is worth $5,000 a week, and I refuse to accept a cent less. Uh. And a girl. <laughs> May I please have a marriage license? A marriage license? For you? No, for my father and mother. Oh, for your father. Huh? What? 
My goodness.